Hi, this is Jason Lee with NextLevelGuitar.com, and I want to talk a little bit about what I'm using for tone today, too. Uh, one of my pretty much prime tones that I'm using is a uh, 1994 reissue of a 63 Fender Reverb tank, we like to call them, or a reverb unit. Uh, the big difference that you're going to find between this and any other unit, say a pedal or a solid state unit, it's actually tube driven and actually has a tank that's floating right in the middle of this unit itself. So later on we'll show you how that works. But for now I'm just going to give a little bit of a brief demo and example of how they work. So uh, this is a tube driven unit which actually pushes the, the springs inside the pan that much more. If you were to take a reverb pedal, that's just a, an emulation of it. And if you were to take a solid state unit, it has a little bit of a softer and a cleaner sound. But most guys like that dirty kind of broken up sound that you're pushing that tank to the limit. All right, now that we actually have a tight shot on top of the reverb tank, um, I'm just going to explain the three knobs right now just to, to break up a little confusion. Uh, it's a really easy unit to use. Um, this is the dwell, so this is pretty much putting the actual tone into the pan itself. So this way if you want to have a heavy dwell, we can uh, leave that on. And then this is the overall mixer right here. So we already have a heavy dwell going, but how much of it do we actually want in the mix? Do we want it to hit hard and then come out soft? We can put it at three or four. Or if we want to go all the way, we can have the dwell all the way up and the mixer all the way up. So now that we actually have the, uh, the tank itself cranked, this is our overall tone. So this is pretty much just like a tone knob on a guitar. But the neat thing is, like I uh, mentioned previously, this actually affects the, the, uh, the sound of the tank itself. So the more you turn the, the tone up, it actually kind of opens up the tone of it and then the more you back it down it smoothens it up and softens it up. So definitely that's a, that's a, a reverb tank in itself and uh, we're going to go on to showing you how to actually lock the pan and how that works. Alright now we're actually looking at a tight close view of the rear of the whole unit itself, our reverb unit. So I'm going to explain the tubes really quick. Uh, this actually runs a 6V6 uh, power tube. It's going to run a 12AT7 reverb driver in the middle position and a 12x7 for tone. Um, this is what I really want to show you the difference between this and an actual twin reverb is that the way this unit is built, if you can see this gold pan right in the, in the back here, this is what's floating in the air. So as opposed to being suspended down on the bottom of a wooden cabinet and losing more reverberation, this actually just floats right in the middle of it. So right here is actually, if you can see it, I'm going to kind of wiggle it like this, this is the lock. So when you're actually transporting the unit, you can push this down, push it to the side, and it actually locks the unit down. This way your springs aren't bouncing around. And on the inside of the pan itself, our gold unit in here, has a piece of foam. So when you actually push that down, it's going to lock the springs in for transportation. So the one thing you always got to remember is that when you have a show where you're going to play with this unit, you got to unlock it and pull it out, and now it's ready to go. So I want to show you uh, three, three prime examples of different tones you can get from the tank itself. So right now, I'm going to change a little bit of the settings. Right now I actually have most of my settings uh, turned all the way up so it has more of a splashy, crashy sound. So let's try some examples of that. So that's definitely more the open classic surf sound, but there's a few things you can do. While actually turning the knobs back, we can get more of a classic tween reverb sound too. Here is the tank itself, and uh, I'm pairing this up with an original 62 Fender Bassman piggyback, which is a head and a cabinet combo. So right now, I've actually uh, put our settings to about 5, 5, and 5. So I'm actually going to do that same riff, but you're going to hear a big difference in tone. It's not so swelly. It's really kind of cookie cutter clean, but let's try it right now. So definitely you can hear it. It has this kind of cool little, you know, mod vibe to it where you just have a little bit of reverb, a little under a twin reverb, but definitely. Now we're actually going to do one more setting where we're going to leave the settings the same, but we're going to take our mix all the way up. So our mix is at 5, our tone's at 5, and our dwell's at 5. But right now we're going to take the mix all the way to 10 and leave everything else at 5. So let's do that right now. Now that our mix is all the way up, I'm going to do that same riff for you now you can hear the difference. <laughs> So 
So while it sounds a little close to the first example, it's a little bit different because we've actually backed the tone knob down. While backing the tone knob down on, on an actual tube reverb unit, you're actually taking the reverb down a little bit too. So it kind of relates to decay and, and equalization. So definitely three prime examples that I think are great to use on a uh, original or reissue Fender reverb unit. Definitely the, uh, the reverb unit or the reverb tank as we like to call it is definitely my favorite way to go for a period correct style reverb. Uh, the main difference between a pedal or a solid state unit is this actually inside the box is going to have the tank floating in midair. So it actually has springs that are attached to springs. Um, if you look at any other combo amp, even a famous uh, amp, the, the Fender Twin Reverb, everyone loves that, but when you want to go to the next step above that, you always throw one of these on it. Difference is, is that with any combo amp, you have to mount the actual pan that holds the springs itself down to the wood. And so what that does is restricts the actual free-flowing bounciness of the springs in a combo amp itself. So with this, you can actually do things like kick it, too, while kicking it, it lets it, psh, it splashes out, um, and definitely just rings longer and gives more of an open tone. Right there's a, right there's a uh, small demonstration of how you uh, shake a reverb tank. If we were actually at a show and had it much louder, it'd be pretty piercing to everyone's ears, but that's kind of the point. You've got to have fun at a surf show. Thanks again. This has been Jason Lee with NextLevelGuitar.com. I want to thank everyone for having me out, and I'm going to play a little bit of an outro for you. Make sure to visit NextLevelGuitar.com and stay tuned for more lessons. Oh.